Everybody, this is Beetle Five coming at you with another one of my reaction videos. Today, I will be reacting to the death battle between Ryu and Jin. Now, this is Ryu's second time in the ring. Now, he lost first to Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, and uh, I'm not too sure if he's gonna win this fight again. To be honest, I mean, Jin from Tekken, first Tekken character to enter the death battle tournament, and uh, he's got Devil Jin, and I think he's just as skilled as Ryu, if not. Probably a bit better. Although Ryu does have some access to the Satsuki no Hano, which I guess is also like his dark form, evil Ryu in a sense. But uh, at the moment, I'm going to have to put in my vote for Jin. Because I think Tekken guys are just built way better than most Street Fighter dudes are. So, alright. Let's see how this death battle goes then. Here we go. Hope you all enjoyed your 4th of July, by the way. I went and saw the first purge. Everyone it was has awesome. Different reasons for studying martial arts: for personal honor, to improve health, and for kicking the crap out of the other people, yeah. like with Ryu, the wandering world warrior of Street Fighter, and Jin Kazuma, the power-hungry martial arts master of Tekken. He's whiz and I'm boom. Yeah, he's pretty fucking and strong. And it's our Jin, job so. to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win. A All right, death here we battle. go. Look at this 3D fight. I'm loving it. He's the hero the world never knew. His name means prosperous, plentiful, and abundant. He is the wandering warrior. He is Ryu. So sure you can. Introduction for a hobo. Orphaned at a young age, Ryu was adopted by the martial arts master Goken. Under Goken's training and beside his fellow student Ken Masters, Ryu was trained in the art of Ansatsuken. AKA the assassination. Probably has foot fungus because he's always barefoot. This style was specifically nice. designed for murder, which automatically makes it the best martial art ever. Well, Goken actually taught Ryu a slightly altered variant of the Ansatsuki. Inspired by karate, kenpo, and judo, Goken's version was a generally non-lethal one. No Reads personal way. code forbids but him from fighting dirty. the deadly side of the martial art lived on in Goken's in brother, Akuma. Akuma, who would ultimately prove to be Goken's downfall. One day, Ryu and Ken return to their dojo to find their master dead. Eh, kind of. He got better later. But Ryu didn't know that, so he swore to wander the earth perfecting his abilities until he could take down Akuma himself. With the Ansatsuken style, Ryu is a master at close quarter combat. With such techniques as the Shoryuken uppercut and the flying hurricane kick, he can take down most foes in mere seconds. He's like a living helicopter of pain! But he can also use his key as a weapon, firing a fireball of energy from his palms. Say it with me. Hadouken! Goken's version of the Ansetsu can also taught Ryu several defensive techniques, including the skill to parry most other attacks with precise timing. And with all these awesome powers of whooping ass, Ryu eventually made his way to the World Warrior Tournament. With his skills, Ryu quickly reached the top of the competition. For the title of World Warrior, he faced his toughest opponent Sagat. yet, Sagat, Sagat who Sagat. ended up beating the shit out of him. But Sagat was surprisingly a pretty good sport, so when he thought the fight was over, he offered Ryu a hand up. And in that moment, something dark swelled from within Evil Ryu's Ryu. consciousness. A force so fierce and destructive, he couldn't contain it. And he lashed out. With an enraged shout and an explosion of blood, Ryu emerged as champion over Sagat's near-dead body. Ryu's dark side had been unleashed. This was the Satsui no Han. A violent inner force so extreme, its name actually means surge of murderous intent. If I ever knowingly father a child, I know what I'm naming him. Under the influence of the Satsui no Hado, Ryu falls into an uncontrollable rage known as Evil Ryu, where his physical and spiritual power skyrockets. He can even teleport and use Akuma's favorite technique, the Shun Goku Satsu, which the literally translates to instant hell murder. Okay, shit, now I gotta have two kids that I care about. The Shun Goku <laughs> Satsu, or the Raging Demon, is a fatal move which attacks the very soul of its victims with the gravity of all their past sins. To make them die 1,000 deaths. But while the Satsui no Hado is a manifestation of Ryu's dark side, he has achieved balance with the light. This is called Mu no Ken, or the power of nothingness. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What's he gonna do with nothing? By focusing on mental and spiritual refinement and detachment, Ryu has achieved the ultimate state of being. This begets a power strong enough to match and even surpass the Satsui no Hado. Oh yeah, that's how Goken survived Akuma's hell murder attack. 
And now Ryu's got the same power. Look at him go. With all this power, Ryu's performed some incredible feats. Aside from winning the World Warrior Tournament, he's dodged bullets, destroyed skyscrapers, and survived Balrog's Gigaton Blow. Yeah, remember him yeah. from that boxing match we did? He's strong enough to kill an elephant in one punch. Ryu is so tough that he's survived getting impaled. And when he goes evil mode, he can just walk through gunfire. He's strong Whoa. enough to lift this enormous boulder over his head. By estimating the boulder's volume compared to Ryu's height and assuming a sandstone composition, we can determine it must weigh at least 36 tons. Plus, there's a guy sitting on top of the boulder, and he's lifting his own boulder! Man, Oro's cool. While Ryu's fighting record isn't perfect, his wins far outnumber his losses. He's defeated his friend Ken, the dictator M. Bison, and even a genetically engineered super warrior named Seth. But those were just pit stops compared to his frequent battles with Akuma. And if you don't know, Akuma shattered an island with a single punch, split Ayers Rock in half in Australia, and jumped to the ocean surface from 4,000 feet below in <laughs> three seconds while destroying a submarine. Jesus. That's about 3,000 miles per hour, by the way, and I guess he just powered through the bends. Yeah, he's definitely final boss material. And so, years after Akuma's attack on his foster father, Ryu faced him for the final time. And with the power of Mu no Ken on his side, Ryu was victorious. All in a day's work for everyone's favorite street fighter. Huh. You had the power to actually defeat that beast. Now show it to me. This power is not to defeat. He's got big fucking hands. This is the power to push forward. All right. It's been a long time since I played Tekken. I haven't played Tekken since three on the PlayStation One, so one of the most dangerous. I've not played newer Tekken will. games. Unless you already knew about his super deadly and super crazy family. Jin was raised by his single mother, who taught him the Kazuma family style martial arts after his father abandoned him. <sighs> ah, story of my life. No, really, those training days with Mama Boomstick <laughs> were some of the best times of my life. One day, Jin's Host mother of the sent devil a great evil approaching. She told him that if anything were to happen to her, he should seek out his grandfather. Heiachi! Right on cue, a yeah. big ass ogre showed up and attacked him. When Jin came to, his mom and Shrek were nowhere to be seen. His mom and Shrek. Don't you hate it how moms are always right? Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult for Jin to find Heihachi. Yeah, he's super rich and has a really tall building. Kinda hard to miss. So rich, in fact, that Heihachi owned a multinational conglomerate empire with its own banking, weaponry, military forces, and, just for kicks, a martial arts tournament. Whoa! Why didn't Mom tell him about this? Time to collect a <laughs> missing <laughs> Freaking nightmare! <laughs> well, she also forgot to mention nice. that Heihachi is a terrible father who's obsessed with throwing his own son off cliffs. Nobody's perfect, I guess. Wow. Regardless, under Heihachi's guidance, Jin trained and perfected the Mishima Ryu fighting style. With two types of martial arts mastered, he's got all sorts of techniques that can pack a punch. Such as the flash punch combo and the electrically charged lightning screw uppercut. Yeah. Or his famous 10 hit combo chain. Once he gets you stuck in his flurry of punches and kicks, you're not going anywhere until he finishes you off with a classic dragon uppercut. With these talents and a thirst for revenge, Jin entered his grandfather's King of Iron Fist tournament. There, he came face to face with the ogre once again. But instead of, you know, interrogating him to find out what happened he to his mother, him, yeah. Jin just killed him. Nice job, stupid. There goes the only lead you had. Yeah, nothing tastes better than sweet, sweet revenge. Except for maybe mom's cooking. What well, well, Heiachi betrayed him. It didn't last long, because he got shot up by his grandfather. Oh, that yeah. son of a bitch. Mama Jin always said never to trust the bald man the who tells his barber, give me the so Wolverine. Wolverine. <laughs> but Jin what the had fuck? a little surprise for Heiachi, and for himself, actually. Thanks yep. to his family line, he has inherited the dreaded and parasitic Devil Gene. Which turns him into devil a gin. laser shooting demon person. Fuck yeah. Now that's one genetic disorder you can sign me up for. Good news then. I've been working on the a devil was previously thought to be a form of, of demonic myself. possession, but oh, yeah? has since then established that to be a genetic mutation passed out of generations. Candy in the blue bucket. What did you do? Well, my dog Jack Spaniels was wandering around scrounging for food as he does, and uh, I was wondering why he suddenly grew horns and wings. You've got to be shitting me. Anyway, compared to his base form, Devil Jin's strength, speed, and durability yes. are better than ever. Devil Jin is strong enough to throw people dozens of feet and even smash them through walls. 
For this instance in particular, he's pushing Heihachi through the limestone wall of an Aztec pyramid. To do this, Jin must have struck the wall with force equal to at least 10 tons per square inch. Hell, Jin is stronger than this guy called Raven, who can toss around this giant war robot named Nancy! When compared what? to real life robots of similar size and accounting for additional weaponry and gear, this machine should weigh anywhere between 15 to 30 tons. Also, Jin is fast enough to dodge bullets and fly into orbit. And survive falling all the way back down! Which puts his maximum flight speed over escape velocity. That's more than 25,000 miles per hour. He can even punch so fast he causes shock waves. That's right, Jin throws punches faster than the speed of sound. Remind me never to give him a high five. Totally reasonable, considering his grandfather can catch bullets in his teeth from just 20 feet away. Oh my god. And surely Jin can do better than that. Heihachi doesn't even have the Devil she Gene. She started That's World War III. Right. The Devil Gene traces back not to Heihachi, but to Jin's grandmother. Who freaking rides tigers? Oh. As a result, Heihachi's son, Kazuya, inherited the Devil Gene and passed it on to Jin. Kazuya's powers are basically the same as Jin's, and he's shown just how far the devil form can go. He shot a blast powerful enough to erupt a volcano and survived a satellite laser straight out of Independence Day. This is the same laser that once shot the robotic soldier Gunjack. By measuring the blast radius and resulting devastation, the laser's firepower appears to equal 3.7 megatons of TNT. You know the bomb that got dropped on Nagasaki in World War the Sequel? Yeah. World it's War the Sequel. Like 176 of those hit it all at once. <laughs> While the Devil Gene can sometimes be difficult for Jin to control, it provides an enormous advantage against almost any foe. With it, he's won three of the four King of Iron Fist tournaments he's entered. He's defeated Heihachi, Kazuya, and even the supposed OG Devil Man himself, Azazel. Too bad he had to start World War the second sequel just to find the a kind sequel. of a dick move. Jin's certainly no angel and hardly a hero. Oh, Still, when it comes down to it, he is the child of destiny, and not even the devil's blood can seal his fate. Can you understand? All this fighting is pointless. It's never gonna end. It will end with this bloodline. And that is why I fight. All right, the combatants are set. Let's send this debate all right. once and for all. But first, all this tug of gin is making me want to pour a glass and eat some delicious blue apron. All righty, so... Ryu does seem to be stronger naturally than Jin. However, I think Devil Jin has much stronger feats than Evil Ryu. Like, way more. Especially with the, the devil laser that uh, that can match that satellite, which is like 32 megatons. Or was it he could survive that? I don't know. But regardless, it, it still seems like Devil Jin's form is stronger than Evil Ryu. So I, I have a theory that, that Ryu's going to be doing a bit more of an ass kicking towards him. But the devil Jin will allow him to take the win. So I'm going to go with Jin on this one. Just because he, he does just seem much more powerful. Because of the devil gene. Now the Satsune no Hado is definitely powerful. But I'm just wondering if that could kill Jin. I mean, it's by attacking his soul. I get, he didn't really show any real immunity to it. I don't know. Could be tough. They might just give Ryu the win he needs. But I'm going to go with Jin. Okay. It also seems like... Uh, that Jin has more control over Devil Jin than Ryu has over Evil Ryu. And here we go. Damn. Oh, there's no way I can lose. Talk is cheap. The answer lies in the heart of battle. Do this music. Hmm. Here we go. Oh, ho. Goes 
Oh, doing those parries pretty nicely. Damn, Ryu. Oh, Hadouken! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Tatsumeko says, Tatsumaki says, Bukaku! Sure you can! Damn! Oh, Shinku Hadouken! Oh, shit. We get Devil Jin now? Devil Jin! Yo. Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Wait a minute! Is this the fucking? Hello! This is the. This is from Ruby. What the hell is this? This is where the relic is. What did they just take this from Rooster Teeth? Oh shit! Evil Ryu. Oh my god! This is literally from Ruby Season Five. This is exactly where we're Cinder and Rave and Raven farm. <laughs> Oh my god! It's a beautiful throwback! Oh, oh my god. Oh. 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 Jin! My boy! Here he comes! Did a lot more damage than Raven and Cinder did. Oh my god. Oh my god! <gasps> oh! 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 <gasps> I forgot he could do that! True warrior. Oh! I get why it's called the power of nothingness. My There's nothing left in his God! Life. This one was a tricky match to decide. I forgot about that power. Many displays of incredible feats. Damn. But very few truly showcase the upper limits of their power. We know that in their base forms, both could lift around 30 tons and move at supersonic speeds. Also, we know Ryu could maintain a much better level of control and discipline in Muno Ken than Jin in Devil Form. Again, I forgot he could do the thingy that allowed him to control it better. pretty good control over it in that Blood Vengeance movie, but it's pretty inconsistent with game canon. Even Tekken's creator has said it's not canon. Also, Jin's fall from Orbit feat was impressive, but it is hard to quantify due to its presentation. Even if we assume we are to take it literally, a man of Jin's size landing at terminal velocity would equal around 18 tons of force. Yeah, that's not even close. Their limits, we had to scale them to comparable characters. Scaling Jin to his father Kazuya was logical. Kazuya survived that 3.7 megaton laser blast, and it's clear it was necessary for him to be in devil form to do so. Kazuya's own laser blast was strong enough to help kick off a volcano's eruption. A feat which could require up to 100 megatons of TNT. But that's a very generous estimate, and its actual potency is likely much less. Since their power comes from the same place, and Jin's even defeated Kazuya before, it's safe to say Jin can do all this too. As for Ryu, we knew exactly who we had to scale him to. Let's Akuma. talk about yeah. Akuma. First off, just to prove this scaling is reasonable, Ryu and Akuma share very similar abilities. They both do. Both were trained in the Atsutsuken fighting style, and both possessed the Satsui no Hado. They fought each other several times, and when the story was all said and done, Ryu emerged ultimately victorious based on his skill alone. Now that that's out of the way, let's watch Akuma punch an island to death! With a single strike, Akuma managed to break apart an entire island so thoroughly that Ryu, who was on the island, was left floating helplessly in nearly clear water. Assuming the island is somewhat circular, we've estimated the volume and deduced that in order to fragment the island like this, Akuma's punch must have been over 400 megatons of TNT. That's more than four times stronger than anything a devil gene has pulled off. And Ryu takes blows from this guy all the time. 
Sure, Ryu wasn't getting hit with 400 megatons every time Akuma landed a punch, but the most a Devil Gene Carrier has ever survived amounts to less than 1% in comparison. Even if Jin could survive a strike as strong as Kazuya's volcano feet, it still pales in comparison. The fact that Ryu survived being on the island as it was blown apart helps justify this scaling too. Well, Jin still takes the speed advantage with that flight into orbit, but it doesn't mean much when the difference. Yeah, I thought that laser was gonna kill him. This massive. When it came down to it, Ryu's strength, durability, and control were just too far out of Jin's reach. Wait, Wiz, we forgot a feat. You remember that Gun Jack robot? A later model of Jack once destroyed a meteor. Couldn't we just scale Jin to that? Well, it's unsupported by canon material, but even if we did. Guess who destroyed an even bigger meteor? Akuma. Akuma. Damn. God damn, well, Akuma. Well, up, everybody. Ryu's taking care of business. The winner is Ryu. Uh, good on Ryu. He got himself a win. That's good. He deserved it. Oh, shit. Our job is to sell socks. Don't make videos. That's what... Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, <laughs> you can the box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link. Alrighty, in the who we do we have coming? Samurai Jack. Oh my God! Versus Afro. Are you kidding me with this Afro Samurai? It's so crazy. It might actually work. The thing is, I act as as much as I respect Samurai Jack as a show, I never watched it as a kid. I, it just didn't really seem that interesting to me. I know it's up there on the ranks though with all the classic Cartoon Network ca characters, and I respect that. I do, and I never watched Afro Ninja, so I don't know nothing about that. But still, that's that's cool. I mean, they haven't really put in anybody from Cartoon Network yet, so that's <laughs> it's pretty neat. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to leave a comment if I'll touch the plaque back to you in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Laters!